Hey everyone, I wanted to try and clear up some confusion around resolution inside of InDesign. Now we're starting off briefly here inside of Bridge because I wanted to demonstrate the two files that we'll be looking at today. The one on the left just here, as if the title wasn't obvious enough, it's 1000 by 1000 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. And I can confirm that just up here in the upper right, there's 1000 by 1000, 72 PPI. And the file on the right just here, same dimensions in terms of pixels, but its resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Again, we can confirm that just up here. Quick thing I want to clear up here, guys. When we're talking about pictures on a screen, we're talking about pixels per inch, okay? Uh, when we're talking about printing, the term is DPI, which is dots per inch. Technically, very different things, but the numbers can also be used interchangeably. So technically, we're using PPI, but if you guys are throwing around DPI, not such a big deal. Okay, so here's our two files. Again, in terms of pixels, they are the same. The only thing that differs is the resolution. Now, we're going to be preparing something in InDesign to send off for professional printing. Now, everybody knows 300 pixels per inch is the magic number we need to hit. So, of course, the file here on the right is far better for printing because it has the higher resolution than the one on the left, right? Or is it? Well, let's jump into InDesign and have a look. So, let's go and file new document, create a new document. And I didn't care about any of the specifics here, guys. I just need a blank page. So let's go up to File, Place, and let's grab those two files from the desktop, the ones we just saw, and I'll just click to place. Now notice I'm just clicking and releasing the mouse and clicking and releasing the mouse. The reason that's important is because clicking and releasing as opposed to clicking and dragging has had InDesign bring them in at what it considers to be the normal size for this file. So this guy just up here with a resolution of 300, the pixels are much more densely packed, which is why the image is showing much smaller. But again, keep in mind, both of these images are 1000 by 1000 pixels. Okay, now I have my links panel open just here. If you don't see yours, just up under window links. And let's have a bit of a look through here. So I've clicked on the first one just here, which is 300 pixels per inch. By the way, if you don't see all this information at the bottom of the links panel, there's a little triangle in the bottom left corner. Just click on that and you should see all this. Okay, so again with my 300 pixel per inch image selected, I want to draw your attention to this number just here, actual PPI. So that's the resolution that's burnt into the image itself. That's the little number that travels with the file itself. There is also a second number just under here, under here effective PPI. That's also currently reading as 300. I'll come back to this effective PPI number in just a few moments. So let's go and click on this other guy just here. Now remembering 1000 by 1000 pixels, but it's 72 pixels per inch. And we can see that over here, the actual PPI is 72 and it's effective PPI also reads as 72. So what is exactly this effective PPI thing? Well, I'm about to show you. So in InDesign, if I wish to resize a frame as well as the image within it, I hold down Command and Shift on a Mac. That's Control Shift on a PC. And then I've got my selection tool and I'm going to hold down those keys and then just grab a corner and drag like so. So let's have a look at what's happened here. This is interesting because the actual PPI still reads 72. So again, that's the number that's burnt into the file. That travels with the file. The effective PPI here has started to grow. It currently reads as 161. So as I've made this image smaller, the pixels within it have become more dense on the screen. So let's actually keep an eye on this effective PPI just now while I actually start to resize this image smaller. And you can see the effective PPI is growing. Now watch what happens when I get down to the exact same size as the other guy. See how those numbers are growing? And as soon as it snaps into place just there, check this out. These guys are now physically the same size on screen. And this guy's effective PPI now reads as 300. So I'm clicking back on the left image just here. It's actual and effective PPIs are both reading as 300. The one on the right here, it's actual PPI still reads as 72, but it's effective PPI is now 300. So clicking on either image, both of their effective PPIs read as 300. So that's all that matters there, guys. So if we're sending this out for professional printing, both of these images have 300 pixels per inch, which is great. It meets that benchmark of 300 pixels per inch. But 
you can see the actual PPI reads as differently for both of these. So the big takeaway from here is the actual PPI is utterly meaningless. If somebody gives you a file and says it's 72 pixels per inch or 300 pixels per inch, or even five or 5,000, who cares? It's all to do with the number of pixels the image contains and whether it has enough when put on screen with an effective PPI of 300 to cover the distance that you need. So a quick uh, summation there. If I was, for example, to place an image on this page and I wanted it to go from the left margin to the right margin, and let's say that distance was 10 inches, I'm sending it out for professional printing. I need to hit that 300 pixel per inch mark. So if that distance is 10 inches and I need 300 pixels per inch, then I need an image that is 3000 pixels wide. I don't care what the actual PPI of the file is. Whatever the number that is burnt into the file, we don't care. We would just need 3000 pixels to cover 10 inches for professional printing at 300 pixels per inch. So that's it there, guys. I hope that helps clarify uh, what's going on with professional printing and actual PPI and effective PPI. Just keep an eye on the effective PPI and you'll be all good. Hope that wasn't too long-winded there, guys. Hope that helped as well. Catch you later.